I survived 100 days in hardcore RL Craft. RL Craft is one of the most intense and popular mod packs. In these 100 days, my goals are to slay tons of dragons, clear Lycanite dungeons, and defeat the Ender Dragon. Aside from those, I just want to survive. Day 1, I spawned on a pretty cold biome and discovered this uh, mob called a Bobeko. At this point, I really needed to get some starter items. I ended up finding a lava pit, which uh, helped warm me up a little. After that, I noticed a much warmer biome, which I jumped down into and collected some sticks. While searching for a potential village, I used this nymph to heal. Then I made some cobblestone and finally found some gravel. With all of that, I could get some starter tools. I made a flint knife and used that to get some of these plant strings and then used those strings to make a hatchet. Then I chopped some trees down to upgrade the tools once more. Luckily, there was a hut here with a crafting table and a chest with some weed in it. I also mined some stones while I was there and upgraded once more. Uh, then that night, I also fought a crake, which was pretty terrifying at this stage. I didn't kill the pixie, but it managed to hurt me really good. This meant I had to sleep to heal up. The next morning, I snatched the bed up and went out to explore. I put one more level into defense as well. During this village search, I took out some turkeys and squid for feathers and ink sacks. Then I was able to make a furnace to cook up some food and I put another level into agility. As I moved forward, I harvested some coal and ended up in a medical camp area. Here I got some iron leggings from the chest and met a villager with a supreme smite enchantment book. That's not all though, these chests had a bunch of healing items which were really helpful. Inside another chest, I picked up 11 obsidian and grabbed a ton of wool from the tents. I was then able to stock up on bandages and also get some sugar cane. Past this place, I finally found a village, and in here was a Lycanite's dungeon, but I was focused on uh, exploring the area first. I activated the waystone and found another structure right across the village, which had a chest full of wool and food. I stocked up on even more bandages and uh, knew that this place had a set of chainmail armor, so I grabbed that while I was here. Still, my defense was too low, so I had to grind out a little more levels. Once all the food cooked, I got level 3 defense and only picked up the important items I had stacked away. This is when I made a mistake and wandered out. I ended up getting attacked by a mob called an Afrit and uh, was set on fire. Luckily, I healed up but the house started to burn down. The only thing I could do was run away and uh, luckily I ended up in a place that was safe. I also made sure to sleep the night away once again. Day 3, I went to clean up some of the residual mobs which got me up to level 4 defense and allowed me to wear chainmail. I felt significantly safer and also uh, decided to explore as well and I made sure to mine all these coal for levels. As I moved forward, I ended up in another village and this place was significantly better. The first village I found was a Fletcher who I traded a bunch of string with. That ended up giving me a good amount of levels and emeralds. I grabbed the bow as well and with all that trading, I got up to level 11 which allowed me to get level 6 defense and level 4 agility. I picked up the dodge skill, traded some more and looted the top floor of this uh, roguelike dungeon. This chest had better armor, some lock picks and two decent bows. I grabbed all those and found these crates which were game changers. I stored a bunch of items in them and then got my defense up to level 7. I didn't want to deal with any of the mobs in the night so I slept once more. Day 4 to 5, it was now time to progress. I grabbed a bunch of stairs and slabs which would help me on these battle towers. Then I stocked up on hay bales and wool with the help of this tower over here. After that it was time for a new weapon and I uh, chose a stone spear because of the range. I also made sure to get a stone tower shield as well to protect myself from skeletons and finally moved on to this battle tower which was nearby. Luckily there was a villager structure close to it so I activated the waystone here and slept the night away as well. Once it was daytime I went over to the battle tower and was able to break one spawner until I got attacked by a pharadon. I had to run inside one of the villagers houses and uh, while I was there I changed the UI for the hearts and healing. I got a hit or two off on the pharadon but the aegises ended up handing the rest. With that done I went back to the tower and picked up the level from the last spawner and then I broke the other one down here as well. The next two spawners got me up to level 16 and I finally had a mob encounter on the floor above this one. These guys were easy to take out and I was level 18 now. I did manage to almost die from something but I was able to heal and keep moving. I ended up picking up 3 iron ingots and uh, breaking the top 2 spawners which got me up to level 23. Here I fought this pixie as well and this guy packed a punch. Once I healed, I got my attack and defense up to 8, mining to 4, and building to 6. I was now able to use an iron sword and slowly made my way down to the lower floors which had tons more mobs. I took out some geists and used these slabs to block the zombies off. That ended up backfiring a little so I had to retreat. A baby zombie also got through so I had to place even more slabs. Once that was done, I actually ended up getting thirsty and since I didn't have purified water, I ended up getting parasites. Lucky for me, there was a nymph around. Once I healed up, I also took out some macas for leather and smelt my chainmail pieces to get some extra iron. I was able to get some iron boots and then specialize into 
combat. I mined some iron ore around the village, and while things were cooking, I took out more mobs, and once all that was done, I had an iron helmet and picked up some shears. Day six, I went right back to grinding out levels from the zombies. I placed some slabs in the front of my head so these gravity zombies couldn't pull me in. Doing this, I was able to take out a bunch of these guys. One of the sticky mobs actually ended up stealing my iron sword while I was there. But uh, things changed when a blighted mob spawned, so now I had to be really careful since these guys can one-shot me. One of the other zombies exploded and that scared me really badly, so I had to retreat quickly and gather myself. This guy ended up outside of the tower, but it was really weak, so I took it out. While I was out there, I found a little head glitch area where I could do tons of damage to the blighted mob. Since they all piled up there, I went back to the stairs to collect some of the levels I had down there. I blocked even more zombies off and got some really close calls from these uh, enchanted guys. Eventually, the blighted mob also came through, but this time I managed to take it out. Still, one of those sticky guys kept stealing my weapons, so I had to swap around these uh, items for a bit. But I did clear out the area and get 8 whole levels from the blighted mob, I was level 31 after that. I managed to pick up an iron chest plate as well and some heart crystals. Plus I got my iron sword back. The last 4 had tons of skeletons which were uh, much more dangerous right now, so I went back to the village to sort things out. I smelt the rest of the chain meal and some iron ores first. Then with all the levels I got my attack and defense up to level 12 and got my building up to 8 which meant I could use reforging stations whenever I could make them. The rest of the levels I had to put into magic so I could get a head start on enchanting and then I fought this really weird mob who dropped leather but uh, it was something that I really needed. I ended the night off by crafting a tool belt which was my first bobble and then made an iron spear plus I picked up these uh, javelin from the mob drops. A 7 to 8, I used these waystones to travel back to a previous village and then grab some wool. I also noticed this uh, building which had two enchantment tables and tons of books and uh, then I actually remembered to craft an atlas. I used my only redstone but now I had one of the most important items. With that done I collected even more books and wool just to trade and then started exploring. I found a waystone out in the wild which I used to teleport around and then decided to explore in another direction. Here I made another stone pickaxe and kept moving along until I found a desert. There were these uh, mirmex around who I took out using my javelin. As more and more of these mobs started spawning I decided to camp out in this little structure. This is where I set up a furnace and smelt some sand for glass. With the glass I made some bottles and was finally able to purify water. I had to wait the night out though staying in this water to fight the heat and in the morning there was this little mob in front of the house who did tons of damage. I was able to use my javelin to take it out and then I decided to move away. Luckily I ended up in a much cooler biome and there was a villager nearby as well where I grabbed a bunch of obsidian and activated the waystone. Since this place was right next to the desert I picked up this uh, giant dragon carcass which gave me a tier 5 fire dragon head. With that done I went back into the village, fought a mob, and went inside of the library. Now these places always have some really good enchanted books. I made my way up to the second floor and I was right. I couldn't really do anything with these books just yet so I decided to advance some trades on this uh, librarian. I sold a librarian on the first floor tons of books which gave me a bunch of levels. To level up some more I made a stone axe and tore the bookshelves apart in here. Around this time I started getting hypothermia as well but at the same time I was back to level 22. With those levels I got up to magic 10 and was able to put some of the good enchanted books onto my crate. The next day I grabbed a few more books to sell and explored the outskirts of the desert. I took out some mobs using my javelin which got me up to level 12. This meant I could upgrade my magic and now use enchantment tables. I found a small dungeon as well which had a spawner and two chests. Inside of one of the chests I got a golden apple. From there I went back to the village to clear my inventory out. And then after that I teleported to a previous village which had enchantment tables and grabbed those. After that I went back to the desert to explore some more and during the night I marked down a Lycanite's dungeon and fought a reaper. Later on, on top of this hill I found a little zombie spawner area and while I was trying to farm a few levels from the zombies, they started spawning outside of the structure. This ended up doing crazy damage so I had to drink one of the recall potions I had. While I was recovering I traded more with this librarian to get some extra levels and then uh, before the night ended I slept to fully heal. The next morning almost immediately I was attacked by a mob who did tons of poison damage. I was already about to die. I slowly took these guys out but I had to use a good amount of bandages. Luckily I got some slime balls and some good XP. From there I went back towards that little zombie structure and since none of them were spawning anymore I was able to break the spawner as well. I kept moving forward through these really hot biomes and ended up in a defiled lands biome. Now here I saw my first dragon so I got out of the render distance really quickly. I marked the dragon down and explored this place a little more. There happened to be a waystone sitting on top of a pyramid which I activated and as it was turning dark I had to return back using the waystone and this time while 
while exploring the village, I ended up getting another crate, uh, which cleared up my inventory. I also purified more water just in case and crafted an emerald ring. This one gave me plus 1% speed. Once all that was done, I decided to teleport to one of the first villages I found to go explore in another direction. Day 11, it was time to get really serious. I used my leather to make a saddle, and with that, I grabbed the nearest horse available. For now, this guy was a game changer. I decided to move forward in one direction and ended up in front of a battle tower. Since I had 23 levels, I used them on shield proficiency and iron skin. With that set up, it was time to clear a battle tower to the best of my ability. I gathered some stone, chopped the tree down to have tons of oak planks ready. Then I blocked off the sides of the battle tower and tried to clear a few mobs. This didn't work too well since a few mobs jumped off from the top floor. So I uh, stuck with plan B, which was just to build up behind the tower and try to break the spawners. Using oak stairs, I was able to create some separation all while being able to hit the zombies myself. I did this for each side and only like had to be careful around the uh, enchanted mobs. One of those guys eventually drew dragged me down so I had to run away. I healed up and slept in a cabin. For a few days straight, I was only focused on the battle tower. I managed to fully clear the first floor and looted the chest. Then I made my way up the stairs to see the second floor as well. I tried fighting from this angle, but I was taking too much damage. So I went back behind the structure. I built up seven blocks from where I was and used the stairs once again. This time I placed a water bucket down for safety. And uh, once everything looked clear, I checked the floor out. A few mobs dropped down from the floor above, which was scary. But after that, this thing was pretty much cleared. I managed to pick up a lesser fire aspect sword as well from here. For the next floor, I once again tried taking the mobs out on the stairway and it was working pretty well to start. I uh, cleared most of the skeletons, but I noticed that uh, none of the spiders were around. Turns out they were all climbing up the wall in front of me. I ended up getting hit by one of those guys, which was really scary. The next morning, I tried clearing out uh, most of the spiders, and the regular ones were super easy to take out, but the enchanted guy was a nightmare. I had to retreat a bunch of times, and while doing that, I put another two levels into defense while I was safe. Most of the spiders ended up getting cleared out anyway, so I started moving up the tower. Since I had some arrows now, it made the job a little easier, but uh, these guys still did serious damage when they did manage to hit me. So I decided to stick with the outside strategy and uh, built up a bunch of blocks above from where I was. Doing this, I was able to uh, mow down zombies, but even with this separation, I would still get hit once in a while. One of these hits was extremely terrifying because I would have died since it launched me all the way back. I only survived because of the water bucket. Then since most of the spiders were cleared out, I used the stairs again because uh, this way I could grab a bunch of XP. I was able to take out a blighted zombie while I was there and a uh, bunch of other enchanted mobs as well. There happened to be so much loot, I carefully went inside this floor and got like four levels and five hard crystals. I had eight now since I already picked up three from a previous battle tower. I managed to grab a wither skeleton head also and made some lock picks. The lock chest here was not that good though. Once again, I went to the back of the tower and then uh, started climbing up trying to cheese it. This time I was only looking for the chests. I cleared out some mobs, made extra lock picks as well, but this one chest was really hard to open and the loot was terrible. As it was turning night, I decided to uh, move on from the battle tower, so I grabbed my horse and went inside that cabin to restock and organize my items. Before taking on any of the final floors, I wanted basic enchants on my armor at least. Day 14, I got on my horse and moved on. I found one of those iron ore mounts and started mining a bunch of them. There was also a little cave in here which had some valuable resources that I snatched up. While everything was cooking, I got my defense up to level 16 and my mining up to level 6. I gathered some extra leather, which uh, allowed me to make a quiver, and this was very helpful since it provided like half a heart. As I moved forward, I ended up back in that first village I ever found. Then I was basically like freezing to death, so I had to sleep the night away. In day 15, I tried to see if I could uh, cheese this Lycanite dungeon, and as soon as I got down the stairs, a little mouse started to come towards me. Now I know how dangerous this little thing was, so I had to use a recall potion. It brought me back towards the Tundra village, and from there I just explored on. I ended up finding another battle tower inside of this jungle, and this one had blazes. It seemed easy at first and I was able to break a spawner, but one of those blazes were enchanted and was able to throw webs around. I ended up taking a good amount of damage so I moved on from there. As I kept moving on, I ended up in another desert biome where I saw another dragon. Past this place was a battle tower, but this one went underground. I sprinkled some slabs to see if I could cheese the first floor and uh, there happened to be a blighted mob inside, which was pretty scary. I think my javelin pushed this guy down a floor, which made the first area pretty safe. So I climbed up to break the first two spawners. Once that was done, 
I went down to slowly clear the zombies. The bladder guy made its way back up, so it was uh, very scary down there. It took a bit, but I cleared that dude out and picked up three more heart crystals. I ended up with one more after clearing out the rest of the zombies. With that, I went up to the top and crafted my first heart container. Once that was done, I hopped right back in to clear out the leftovers. Luckily, these guys dropped tons of bandages and plasters. I did get attacked by a reaper and eventually had to use a med kit since it did so much damage. Also during this time, my horse died, but at least I was almost level 30 again. Day 16, somehow, someway, even with the spawners broken, more mobs would just be on the first floor. I was there the whole time and only coming up to heal or make more weapons. Eventually, an enchanted spider came out and I was able to hit it a few times, getting its health down to 25%, but this guy was insanely fast and stole my spear, so I had to run out and jump into the river. I only had like one javelin, so I ended up uh, getting its health down a bit more. This guy was uniquely annoying since it gives you the wither effect every time you hit it. Thankfully, it got trapped in this little cave, so I was able to get away. I decided to explore a little bit of the desert as a slight detour and found some random items hidden in these chests. There also happened to be a random waystone out here as well, and since I was really burning up, I decided to take that back to the tundra village to purify more water and clear up my inventory. I also really needed another horse, so once that was done, I teleported towards another village, but here I was attacked by a Ventoraptor and had to hide out in this tower. Luckily, I found this uh, diamond skirt, which actually protected a lot. As soon as I woke up, I went out to search for a mount, and along the way, I got attacked by a hippogriff. And this guy ended up dropping a lot of leather, which was really nice. Eventually, I was right next to an ocean and decided to just follow the coastline. I traveled for a pretty long time until I decided to make a saddle. As it turned dark, I ended up in a swamp where I almost died to this tarantula. From there, I slept the night away and finally ended up in a pretty much perfect village. The first thing I did here was activate a waystone and then I tamed a horse. Once that was done, I started looking through the trades of these villagers. One of these guys was a librarian and after leveling it up, I got extremely lucky with a mending book trade. I picked up this glass and as I was about to uh, trap this villager, I just couldn't find it anywhere. Eventually, I found this guy and I encased him in glass. I lit up the area as much as I could, marked the village on my map and uh, picked up my first mending book. From there, I found another one of those enchantment buildings in this village and grabbed a ton of books. On the top floor, I reorganized the enchantment table, which was basically maxed now, and this place was going to be a temporary home until I started getting stacked. As I was grabbing wool that night, there was an explosion, which I thought was from a dragon. Luckily, it was from another mob. The Aegis handled that, and I was able to pick up tons of emeralds from this fisherman, and with all of that, I picked up my second mending book. Day 19, I stocked up on more emeralds and picked up a third mending book. Then I got on my horse and went out to explore. Right next to this village was a defiled lands biome, and uh, since I wasn't really careful, my horse ended up dying by one of those uh, poisonous plants. I also noticed a dragon here as well, which I marked down. Right next to it, I found a cool looking structure which I broke into and uh, leveled up my mining to 8. This was because I wanted these emerald blocks, and those needed an iron pickaxe. I also noticed these uh, charred blocks, so I had to leave the area pretty quickly because uh, I knew the dragon would still be able to attack me here. Once I made it past this biome, I ended up in another one of those battle towers that went underground. I broke the spawners on the top floors and used the water bucket to push these mobs back in. As the zombies piled up, I noticed another blighted mob in here as well. I was able to take out a lot of them, but it got dark so I slept just in case any mobs spawn over me. As soon as I woke up, I made a spare iron chest plate and started chopping down more zombies. One of the enchanted zombies was actually giving me a hard time, so I had to heal a lot. I also decided to switch to an iron sword since it would do a bunch of sweeping damage. After a good amount of time and bandages, I finally took out the blighted and enchanted mobs. I managed to level up a few more times and finally got onto this floor. The chest in here sucked, but I did manage to get a heart container. I quickly slept to heal up and started moving down the tower. Since I basically fought hundreds of mobs on the floor above, the next floor was pretty safe. I then made some lockpicks to open this chest and it was alright. Once again, I had to remake a sword and spear and then was able to clear the way down. Now this floor was also empty and the chest had some uh, shock locks. Either way, this chest sucked, so I kept moving on. I switched to an enchanted sword, and I managed to clear this area out as well. Finally, I reached the good chests, and this one had a golden apple and a diamond pickaxe. From all of this, I also got up to level 45. Day 23 to day 24 was pretty much the same thing. I slabbed off the entryway and took out a bunch of mobs. I then noticed a troll on the floor below, which would be pretty useful for me. In the meantime, I opened the chest in here, and this one was really good. I picked up an emerald amulet, a haste ring, and diamond horse armor, which I could smelt down. While 
while I was there, I also did some inventory management and made a backpack. With that and seven diamonds from horse armor, I was actually pretty happy. I also grabbed some slabs and started staircasing down. With my spear, I got a bunch of hits off on the troll, but I think it started fighting these other mobs as well. Once I got down to the floor, I noticed it didn't drop any troll leather or its tusk. Then without realizing, I accidentally angered the golem by opening a chest and then I had to run away. I also got attacked by a banshee, so I had to use my recall potion. This worked out fine because now I could start enchanting a lot of the stuff I had. I chose protection 2 on the chest plate, lesser sharpness 5 on the spear, and unbreaking 3 for the diamond skirt. For the helmet, I also got protection 3, which was huge, and I managed to get some really good boots as well. It had protection 4, double jump, and some feather falling. With all that done, I purified even more water and got vampirism 1 on my sword. Then I tamed a new horse and went back to the battle tower. This time, I realized I could snatch up the chests and bring them away from the golem's view. After practicing, I started making my way down to do it on the real thing. It ended up working perfectly on the second to last chest, and after two trips, I brought the whole thing to the top floor. Now, this chest was great. I got a diamond chest plate, more ender pearls and lapis plus a bunch of other important stuff like blaze powder and emeralds i split some items between the backpack and crate and then had the very hard task of grabbing the final chest for this i broke two blocks away from the battle tower and dug down until i was on the same level as the chest then i covered the top of the chest so i wouldn't be able to open it and it worked i snatched up one chest put it at the top floor and went back for round two now this chest was even better it had three diamond blocks a cobalt shield and tons more stuff from there, I explored around the desert a little bit more and uh, marked down some dragons. Eventually, I ended up in a village where I activated a waystone and camped out in the village trying to uh, battle the heat. I made a bunch of bandages and then moved on. But while I was out there, I actually got caught by these sirens. These guys were actually super tough to beat and I was genuinely scared. With that done, I got to another battle tower during the night, which was sandwiched between two dragons. Luckily, they were just far enough to not see me. Before taking that on though, I teleported back towards some random village to sleep. Day 26, as soon as I woke up, a Lycanite's mob event started. And this one was called Sub-Zero. Now all these guys were like level 8 mobs. They also did tons of damage, so I had to camp out inside of the house for a little bit. Once the mob stopped spawning, I uh, cleared some of these guys out near me and I was able to get out of there. I got back towards the mending village and was able to enchant my diamond chest plate, which turned out to be protection 4 and unbreaking 3. Then I got my building up to level 12 and uh, snatched up an anvil to put a mending book on this piece. I then grabbed an extra mending book and made a diamond helmet to check out enchants with. As I was getting ready to travel again, I purified more water and crafted a diamond shield. I also really wanted this uh, potion ring of speed, which I actually had most of the items for. There also happened to be a sugar cane in the village, but I was just one sugar short. With all this setup done, I teleported towards a desert village, grabbed my horse, and went over to the battle tower. I broke the spawners at the top and started making my way down. Once again, I used slabs, but uh, since this was an underground structure, I also opened the top floor up to let the light through. With all that and a vampirism sword, I cleared out that floor super quickly. The next floor was pretty easy too, and the only issues I really had were the spiders. Once this floor was clear, I had the hard task of uh, opening this diamond enchanted lock. This lock was an absolute nightmare, and I ended up getting bombarded by spiders so I had to get away, plus my horse died. Then as I tried to sleep, a reaper attacked me. From there, I decided to just skip sleep and uh, clear the rest of the spiders out. Also, I decided to move on from the diamond lock chest as well. I focused on the floor below and cleared that place out. Plus, this chest only had gold locks, so I opened it up after making a few more lock picks. The next floor wasn't too hard, especially since I had crafted a bunch of extra weapons to help me. This floor's chest sucked, and the only things that mattered were the health crystals I ended up getting. I did basically the same thing on the floor below this one, except uh, now it was finally getting tons more mobs. When I went into the room, I got hit by some spiders and fell into the room underneath as well. And since there were a ton of mobs there, I had to grab my recall potion and come back home. While I was back, I turned the heart dust into crystals and got some really good enchants on the diamond helmet. I put mending on it since I really needed the helmet for now. Next up were the boots and I got protection 3 on those. I held off putting mending on those for now and instead grabbed a ton of books from here. With that I traded with the mending guy and teleported to that desert village to loot some more things. The only issue was this hyperthermia. I got some books and some sugarcane which allowed me to make a potion ring of speed. Then I grabbed even more books, traded for an extra mending book and enchanted an iron sword as well. Day 30 I just needed a few more things before I cleared out the battle tower again. First I teleported around to get some grapes and this was just to make warp scrolls with that i had to tame another horse and finally went back to the battle tower after that the last floor i cleared had a pretty good chest once again i slabbed up and cleared the mobs down here and just like clockwork my horse died again 
This next floor was all right, but the next two were the big ones. I didn't know that lock picking doesn't aggro the golem yet, so I decided to take on the hardest chest first. I built basically a spiral, and since I didn't block off the line of sight, the golem got angry immediately and I had to recall. Also since my horse died, I would have to walk there, but at least I was back. So I got more water and made a bunch more golden apples. Day 31 or day 32, I wasted a bunch of levels looking for enchants on iron swords, but I managed to smelt them for iron nuggets and then use those to make more lock picks. I then combined a few of the bows I had together and decided to run back to the tower. There were just a few issues with this though. First I had to avoid dragons, second I had to avoid really strong mobs, and third I had to deal with the heat. Nonetheless, I was able to make it back to the desert village and chilled out in a pool of water. I slept the night away to get free health and finally got back to the tower. My first plan was just to use this water bucket to push the golem away from all the loot, but uh, that didn't work that well at all. However, being eye level with the golem managed to work 100% perfectly and I was able to to loot from the stairs that I built. I grabbed as much as I could without moving forward and I put all that stuff away. This is also when I unlocked the chest that was on the second to last floor and then I uh, managed to bring it all the way to the top so the golem doesn't get angry when I open it. This chest was really good. There were a lot of diamond gear that I could smell down. I also found some sugarcane as well and harvested those to make a second potion ring of speed. This would be uh, helpful for dragon hunting. I didn't want to risk angering the golem anymore so I settled with whatever I had on me right now. Then after smelting all the diamond gear I had 19 total diamonds. That night I fought a few mobs and wanted to explore uh, the north area of my atlas. This is where I fought like a two star enchanted mob. Once it was daytime I was uh, along the coastline again so I chopped down some trees to make a boat. I quickly explored this structure and went right back onto the boat to find something better. This worked out very well as I ended up on a mesa biome next to a four tower structure which was right in front of a village. Inside the mesa I was having some really bad issues with the heat so I had to sit in water the whole time. From there I checked out one side of the four tower and this side was filled with tons of vindicators. They were blocked off by a slab so I was able to farm them for emeralds. I was basically decimating these vindicators waiting for their spawners to break. I picked up tons of emeralds but the most important thing I got after I defeated these these enchanted vindicators were these uh, 10 extra heart crystals. I grabbed all the other heart crystals I had and I was able to make two heart containers. From there I got my attack up to 16 and a creeper dropped in front of me which scared me really badly. That's not all though, this Keppel thing attacked me as well and it did so much damage since it like afflicts you with poison and plague too. I had to go back to the villages and use some bandages. Then I slept to fully heal up. On day 34 I was back at the fort tower and I made a little safe room that I could run to and uh, started checking this area deeper in. Some wither skeletons and spawn so I had to back out really quickly and I also got splashed by a witch who messed up my inventory so I could already imagine just how annoying they were gonna be. With the mobs gone in that area I grabbed everything in the three chests there. I ended up filling a whole crate with these enchanted books but they were really good. I got like sharpness 4 and infinity. I then used slabs to block some areas off and uh, broke the spawners that were exposed. So with those spawners cleared I thought I was safe and I walked in but uh, I ended up getting attacked immediately. I managed to block off the main entryway though and broke two more spawners. The chest in front of those spawners were great though since they gave me a bunch of arrows and bolts. The next challenge was clearing this corner out. Now, this side was filled with vindicators and sometimes banshees and reapers would spawn. I carefully took out as many vindicators as I possibly could and made sure to use this nymph as much as possible as well. As I was taking out a bunch of the other vindicators who bunched up next to a window, I had to fight a banshee. And while fighting that guy, I also had to uh, take out this keppel. They did tons of damage so I needed to strategize back at the village. Here I crafted a bunch of slabs and stairs and also made some stone slabs which are needed to reforge baubles. For some reason the recipe wasn't working at first. I was working on that till the morning and then decided to check out this tower in the village. Here I used some diamonds to make lock picks. That all ended up being a huge waste since the loot in these chests absolutely sucked. I decided to go back though and clear the bottom floor of one of those four towers again. A blighted vindicator spawned so I was super careful but eventually I managed to take the guy out. This gave me a ton of stuff and I finally felt safe enough to check the rest of the room out. I grabbed one block of emerald and went over to the room connecting to this one. Eventually I saw another blighted mob's fire so I steered clear from this place for a little bit. Instead I went back to the village and since I had grabbed some anvils from the fort tower I made a reforging station. With that I used my gold to get undying on the two potion rings I had. I also used most of my leather on the tool belt as well but uh, the extra hearts were uh, all worth it. Since I also had level 16 attack I crafted a diamond sword as well. Day 36 I quickly hopped back into the mending village to enchant the diamond sword and after combining another sharpness book on that sword it actually ended up looking really solid. After that I got some very bad news. The mending villager was no longer with us. I think the dude passed away. 
Anyway, with that done, I went back to the four towers and explored the rooms I hadn't been in. The chests in here were pretty nice, and after that, it was time to move up the tower. At first, I tried luring all the zombies down to clear them out safely, and that was actually working pretty well at the beginning. The second floor's chest kind of sucked, and my backpack was filled at this point, so I had to run back to the village to do some inventory management. Then I went back up the ladders to the bulk of the towers. I was able to block off a good amount of zombies, but some mobs dropped from behind me and did a bunch of damage, so I had to retreat. I still cleared out a good chunk of mobs, and since it was turning to day, I slept to heal quickly. As soon as I woke up, I was attacked by a banshee and then two of these mobs called Ichatix. I had to eat a golden apple and then fully heal up after that fight. From there, I was basically just cheesing the tower. Doing all of that, I got up to level 35 and used one of those levels to get my agility up to 10. Then after fighting a few more mobs, I got my agility up to 12 and was able to pick up this undershirt perk. Uh, after that, a very scary blighted mob spawned in that area, which meant I had to stay back. I managed to take care of that guy and picked up five more levels from it. After all that clearing out, I could finally loot this library room. I picked a bunch of uh, really nice books, 13 heart crystals, and uh, saw a blighted vex. So I warped back towards the nearest village. From there, I got another heart container and cleared up my inventory while purifying more water. At 38, I picked a bucket of lava and made another one of those reforging things. Then I was using a bunch of diamonds, trying to get masterful on my diamond armor. It ended up taking most of my diamonds, but I did get like two pieces that were good. As soon as that was finished, I went back to the four towers and I tried exploring another room. This is where I got attacked by the Blighted Vex, who did so much damage. I ended up jumping into the fountain and warping away. Once I was safe, I decided to uh, make a few more diamond swords and roll a few enchants. I ended up getting vampirism on one, so I combined it with the main sword and uh, smelt the others. I quickly came back to the Mesa Village to grab more grapes so I could have more warp scrolls for an emergency. A 39 to 40, now with the form of lifesteal on my sword, I felt pretty invincible. I started moving across this four tower pretty quickly fighting a bunch of witches. I picked up a few heart crystals and ripped the ground apart looking for spawners. Some of them were very well hidden though. I cleared the room out, drank a potion of luck and started moving on. The next room was much easier, but it spawned creepers who were just annoying. Once that place was done, the room next to it was an actual challenge. I took out a few mobs and any spawners I could reach and used these cobblestone stairs to block mobs off for now. Then I grabbed the ores in this room and started looting the chests, which were pretty nice. There was a diamond lock chest in there too, which was actually pretty challenging, but the loot inside was really nice. With that done, I used the smallest little gap in the stairs to take out mobs on the floor above. This gave me more levels, which I used to get iron skin to level 2 and pump up my resistances. Everything was going well until one of those witches set off a lightning blast, which burned the oak stairs down and allowed some mobs to start dropping. I also took a bunch of damage, so I backed off and healed. The next day, I slowly built back up to the floor, but was uh, hurt by witches again, so I had to retreat. Then out of nowhere, even more mobs spawned, and there was way too much going on on that floor. At this point, I decided to chill out and let those guys despawn, so I explored more areas around the village. I ended up finding another one of those structures with tons of bookshelves, and behind that was just a free house. I mean, there were a few mobs in there, I had to clear out the zombies and break some spawners first. With the bottom floor cleared though, I made my way up to the attic, which was filled with wither skeleton spawners. I lit up the area as well, and then uh, I retreated. Once the wither effect went away, I came back to clear the mobs and the spawners. This place was basically the best home for me. One of the rooms also had three enchanted golden apples as well, so I decided to move in. I made a bunch of torches and lit them up using matchboxes. At 41, once everything was lit up, I chose the bedroom as the place to put the chests in. This process actually took a little bit of time since I had so many items in my backpack and inside the crates. I basically made one chest as a valuables one and the other one for general items. With that done, I made an enchantment setup in the attic and store all of the things like enchanted books, regular books, and lapis there. I put the reforging stations and the anvils there as well, but the only issue for me right now was the heat. Other than that, this place was perfect, so I slept for the first time in my new home. At 42, I made an extra bow and checked out some of the area behind my house. Luckily, there was only a dead dragon behind me, who I didn't even uh, grab the loot of. Past that area, I, there was a little crater thing which I poured water into, but I was too late and cinders managed to spawn anyway. I fought one of those guys and just decided to move on. From there, I ended up in a desert biome, which had a pyramid and a dragon, so I went in the opposite direction of that. I ended up in a savanna biome as it was getting dark, and as I went further along this place, I saw what looked like another dragon's nest. I marked that down and realized I was sandwiched between two dragons. I also realized I had been here before, so I warped back home. It had been forever, but now my backpack was actually empty, so I filled it with things that I could potentially need during my travels. Then I broke all the armor stands in my house to get the chainmail armor. I 
I decided to cook those for iron nuggets. All of that gave me a few blocks of iron as well, which I kept inside the backpack. Day 43 to day 44, I was once again fully prepared to take on this four tower again. I started jumping back to where I left off. The floor I was on had blocks of iron, emerald, and diamonds. I started fighting off the witches as well, but uh, they weren't too bad when they didn't throw those OP potions at me. I had to do some tactical retreats here and there to heal as well. Then I was trying to play some blocks and it turns out that there was a magical force that wasn't allowing me to. Turns out I would have to break the end crystal on the top floor first. The only problem was that the stairs burned down so I was having a hard time reaching the top floor. After that a ton of witches dropped down and that ended up doing a bunch of damage to me. Once I healed up I picked another corner to clear this area was only filled with skeletons who were actually not really hard to take out at all once that was cleared i went inside bought some of the leftover mobs and grabbed whatever was left this also gave me another heart container which was a huge help i ended up climbing the ladders in here and went to the floor above now one of these rooms had tons of tnt placed around and some creeper spawners i uh blew up a few and got an achievement as i was running away after that i spent the whole night clearing out the mobs left over in that room and in the morning i could finally climb over to the top of this one tower there was a chest here with some enchanted books and frost rods. Across this tower was another room filled with witches and uh, for the rest of the day I was only focused on getting in that room to go up those stairs. I basically just lured out as many witches as I could so I could hopefully cause the spawners to break. One of those guys jumbled up my inventories which was super annoying and uh, still for some reason it felt like there was like infinite witches. And if that wasn't bad enough, a Lycanite's mob event started that night as well. I ended up eating another golden apple and then had to warp away to sleep. Day 45 to day 46, I used the diamonds I had to make a diamond strength and crossbow. I then enchanted this thing and got unbreaking 3 on it. Once that was done, I rolled a bunch of enchants and got lucky with a looting 2 book which I put on my sword. With that done, I went back to the 4 tower to clear some of the lycanite mobs out from the last event. I got some good levels and made my way back towards the top floors where I broke the end crystal in the center. This basically dropped a bunch of mobs onto me so I had to retreat again. But now I could break and place any blocks up there. I was fighting those vindicators off the whole night and in the morning I finally made it to the top but it didn't last long since I was swarmed by vexes and had to run away once again. I tried like five or six more times and kept bailing. The only thing that helped me was that the floor below had tons of healing items. Eventually it all worked out and the spawners broke and uh, this meant that I could loot all the chests. The first two chests sucked and were not worth any of the work at all. Actually, on that whole floor, all the chests were really bad, but I was able to build my way to the other towers. This next place had a few spawners and the chests were packed with arrows. To stop some creepers from spawning, I had to sleep the night away. It took basically forever, but I made it to the last tower and broke the crystal in here as well. After running away and healing, I now only had to deal with the last set of mobs and they were just wither skeletons. Very slowly, I was fighting these guys and then their uh, spawner broke, so I was able to make my way up. In the first chest, I got a really good bobble. This potion ring of health boost was the best bobble I had so far. The rest of the chest had the same types of loot. It was just random gear, ingots, and some really good enchanted books. I picked up all the gold nuggets and gold blocks from the floor underneath and then came back home. The first thing I did when I got back home was make a bunch of bolts and then I expanded the book chest above. Once that was done, I put everything away and enchanted these diamond boots. The next morning, I smelted down the other diamond items and leveled my mining up to 13. Then I healed up using a nymph crafted more warp scrolls and put all the gold I had to use to reforge this new potion ring. This took embarrassingly long, I had to settle with the healthy perk instead of the undying one that I wanted. A 49 to 50, I really wanted this fire dragon eye but I wasn't even close to having enough of the glowing ingots. So I leveled up my farming to 4 and picked up some carrots. With that I had this uh, ring of enchanted eyes that I would swap around with the potion ring of speed. From there I wanted to explore and had a very bad lag spike but that meant this gigantic structure spawned in front of me. So the thing about this structure is that it has a chance to spawn mending villagers. So I started searching for that by going through every single building I could. At night I equipped my night vision ring and kept doing the same thing. I did stop and buy a ton of arrows from the Fletchers though. I filled up the entire quiver and found a ton of iron blocks lying around. I grabbed all of that and as it started turning into morning I was near what seemed like the main castle. While exploring the boat next to the castle I upgraded my quiver to gold and then I made my way into the main building where I saw a throne made out of emerald blocks. I got 14 emerald blocks and 5 golden apples from that room. After that I managed to find some more gold blocks and decided to move on from this structure since I was now freezing. After traveling for a while I settled down on a savanna biome and called it a night. Day 51 to day 52 I was back on the boat exploring another direction and this
this time I ended up on some floating structure. I opened the locked chest in here and used some of the bandages around the area, then decided to move on. Eventually, as I moved through the ocean, I found a battle tower, but there happened to be a dragon nearby, so I marked the area down and got out of there. This is when I got pulled in by an enchanted siren, and these mobs did a number on me. I was actually terrified, but I pulled through and was able to sleep to heal myself. In the morning, I made another boat and fought more sirens. Once that was done, I found myself back on some land in front of a dragon. I pulled out my crossbow, and with the little bit of bolts I had, I started firing it. I got a good few hits and was able to run away as it aggroed on me. While running, I heard more heavy wings flapping, so I got scared and warped back home. But I was able to mark this place down on my atlas. Once I made it back home, I got attacked by these dogs who hurt me pretty bad. Then I put everything away and made a bunch of golden apples. With all that done, I checked my enchanted books and realized I had a power 5 book and an infinity book. So I combined those two together and put them on my crossbow. This thing was now ready to take dragons out. Then I used a good chunk of levels combining protection 3 and uh, feather falling 4. Last but not least, I reforged the crossbow until I got something good and then used the nymph to heal my hearts. Day 53 to day 54, I really wanted to try out this crossbow so I went out to travel. This thing managed to shred through one of these sylphs. I tried to loot the pyramid though, but way too many sylphs spawned. So I instead focused my attack on a dragon. I was able to get a bunch of hits off as this dragon started flying up. Eventually it almost caught me, so I ran and that worked out pretty well. My entire dragon hunting strategy was to stay as far away as possible and both the minute it starts to investigate. This fight actually was pretty nerve wracking and took a really long time. I was very lucky that I had the night vision ring but even with that the dragon was hard to see. Still though, I fought the dragon the whole day and only managed to take damage from the other mobs in the area. I put a pretty good amount of levels into these archery perks as well and actually managed to kill my first dragon. For this guy, I grabbed two bottles of blood and then uh, for the rest of the carcass, I just grabbed the scales instead. I fought a few more of these very strong mobs in the morning and decided to come back home. As soon as I was back, I put the stuff away and uh, enchanted and repaired my boots. That's not all though, I ended up getting them to masterful quality as well. Then with this fire dragon heart, I finally made a dragon canteen. I was sick and tired of purifying water. I kept the old water I had so I could drink it and uh, use the empty ones for dragon blood. Before moving on, I harvested some of the farm, grabbed a bunch of hay bales, and picked up a bunch of wool. That night, I even fought a bunch of these uh, sea mobs. Day 55 to day 56, I repaired my diamond sword and got on a boat to explore some more. After a little while, I ended up in a desert village which was next to the waters. I checked out the villagers, activated the waystone, and saw a giant sea serpent. I was able to take the first one out and noticed an even larger sea serpent behind a mountain. This guy kind of disappeared, so I uh, tamed a horse really quickly. Things got even better as I noticed a battle tower out on the sea and a librarian with a Viper 5 trade. I stored most of the books I got in this library inside my crates and went towards the battle tower. Really quickly, I broke the two spawners up top and lockpicked the top chest as well. With the night vision, this tower felt pretty easy. I steamrolled through the first floor, breaking the spawners and looting the chests. I grabbed a few slabs and did the same thing for the next floor. The only issue I had were the spiders once again. This was since uh, poison ignores your armor. I had to tactical retreat this time and while I was out, I got picked up by a fly flying mob and launched into the water where I got attacked by these water mobs. Yeah, things were going pretty bad. I managed to heal up though and fully waited till the morning. With that done, I went back and carefully cleared that spider room, but even with all that taken care of, I didn't get a single bazaar. From there, I noticed that this battle tower was connected to another structure, so I stayed on the same floor and fired down some arrows to thin out the herd safely. I managed to take out an absolute ton of mobs, and for the first time in this world, my game was actually lagging. So I think there were like basically hundreds of mobs around this battle tower. This was the most amount of zombies I had to clear out ever. It actually took a really good amount of time. I ended up getting a bunch of levels though. With the those guys gone, I opened a gold lock chest and got some junk. Then as I was taking out some spiders on the floor underneath, I noticed they dropped the bazaar. As I made my way down the stairs, I realized why I was lagging. Turns out hundreds of zombies had piled up right on the corner of the battle tower since it was right next to a doom like dungeon. I also accidentally fell onto the floor below as I was trying to heal and I had to eat an enchanted golden apple. That allowed me to clear the mobs off and then also block off the doom like. Inside one of the chests, I got one enchanted golden apple and some really good books. This time, I had to clear out hundreds of zombies on two fronts. One was from the stairs below, and the others were from the Doom-like dungeon. Both of these took me absolutely forever to clear out, and eventually I did, and got up to level 48. With those levels, I got my defense and attack to level 20. So I was still in the same battle tower, but I could finally start moving down. And these chests were getting pretty good. I got the sunglasses bobble, and I also accidentally equipped these uh, Curse of Binding silver leggings. So uh, I would have to wait for those to break eventually. After clearing out the skeletons in one of the last few rooms, I only had spiders left, which were easy to take out now that I had a bazaar. This this happened to be the second to last room and since the golem was underneath me, I made sure to safely pick up the chest here and bring them all the way up to the top. 
After fighting off some of the mobs, I looted the chest and got some really good stuff like this broken heart bauble. After storing everything away, I got my defense up to level 23 and built a spiral staircase that led down to the final chest. This time I actually aggroed the golem but I managed to escape. I came back down right away and this dude was basically just chilled out. I did only manage to get a few items though and at this time I was basically done with the tower so I got out of there. After that I crafted a bunch of bandages, checked out more villagers and smelt most of the diamond gear I had on me. Then that night I had to craft another saddle since my horse died and uh, this had to be like my 6th time. With that horse I pushed my luck and went to challenge the giant sea serpent behind the hill. Now this fight started off great and I was able to do tons of damage but eventually it launched up and almost decapitated me. I jumped down from the hill and uh, luckily this thing was still there so I was able to shoot it down. I picked up tons of scale and hopped back on my horse. Day 58 I was riding around till the morning around these deserts and mesa biomes. Eventually I went over a small hill and was really close to a fire dragon. I managed to get away before it attacked me and started taking shots at it from a distance. The strategy remained the same, keep firing until the dragon notices you and then bolt. With the horse, this strategy was working extremely well and I felt way more safe. There were a few issues, but uh, after they were taken care of, this dragon started breaking into the side of a mountain which allowed me to get off the finishing blow. This time I only picked up the scales and got on my horse quickly as possible. I heard large wings again. It turned out to be an ice dragon so I was really lucky that I got out of there quick. I really wanted to get out of there, but I decided to take this guy on as well. Since it was an ice dragon, the lesser flame on my crossbow actually worked. Every once in a while I was able to light this dragon on fire. My biggest challenge this whole fight was the hyperthermia. After employing the same strategy, I ended up taking out the ice dragon as well. Just to be safe, I took two bottles of ice dragon blood and then looted the rest of the carcass. Right here, I forgot to pick my backpack back up, so without realizing, I just leveled up my defense of 24 and came home. As you can see, when I tried to place my backpack down and nothing happened, I started to freak out. I immediately got on my horse, healed up using this nymph, and rode all the way back to get that backpack. Once I picked it up, I noticed another dragon, and I felt pretty brave, so I started firing off on it. Now, this one was bronze, which was a really good color. This fight ended up taking all night and at some points it was actually really scary. The next day I was still on the same dragon hunt and accidentally fell into a cave. Just so I wouldn't get a fire rain down on me, I stayed low. Eventually this dragon moved back so I got on my horse and started firing off even more arrows. This time it finally happened and I took another dragon down. That's not all though, I managed to get 26 scales from this guy. A little bit further I ended up seeing another dragon in that same vicinity but I held off since I already took out a bunch of dragons already. Instead I came back home to put the massive haul I had away. Now with all this loot, my chests were actually starting to get filled up. I ended up making these barrels for the dragon loot, but uh, they end up getting filled up really quickly, just watch. After that, I used the bronze scales to make a set of dragon armor. I even made a flame dragon bone sword as well. I put them in a barrel next to the enchantment setup and placed the books I wanted to use next to them as well. With that done, I repaired my diamond sword and reforged that as well. Day 60 to day 61, the baubles I had were still pretty weak, so I looked at the ones I could potentially craft. One of them was called a poison stone, which took a lot of blaze rods to make. Turns out I was still short uh, some fermented spider eyes, so I decided to get on my horse and go back to exploring. This is when I realized how overpowered my crossbow was. It took like one or two shots to wipe out any mobs. I then put on my night vision and started going underground to look for trolls as well. I was basically looking through these cold biomes since this is where they spawn. I really needed a flying mount and I already had some crab meat so I could make some avian treat. There were some really strong mobs down here in this one cave. This doom like dungeon was also super dangerous but I did manage to get a fermented spider eye. I ended up taking a lot of damage down here but I stumbled into a much bigger area. Here I fought this uh, monster who actually made me eat a golden apple but after that I cleared the rest of them out pretty easily. There were also heart crystal shards around, a bunch of diamond and emeralds. Once I grabbed all of that I made my way out of the caves so I wouldn't freeze and since it was close to morning I slept to get some quick health. I ended up waking up right in front of another dragon's nest and this one was red. All I did was basically move back and forth firing when I got far enough and after doing all of that for quite some time this red dragon was down and out. I grabbed all the scales and bones from this guy and right as I crossed the hill I saw a black dragon as well. Now for this guy I managed to do tons of damage as it was on the ground. Then when it started flying it kept hiding behind mountains. It didn't really matter to me though since I was able to wipe it out pretty quickly. As if things weren't weird enough I found a little villager area and this was right in front of another dragon. I got on my horse, took a pot shot and while I was running I got lit up by this dragon. Luckily I survived but my horse didn't. I just saw another village and thought I was safe but I noticed that this place was also next to a dragon's nest so I made sure to mark that down as well. I tried to uh, tame a horse but this dragon really scared me off. While I got back, I used a nymph to heal and put everything away. I also reforged the backpack too. Day 62 to day 63, I was able to use the bazaar to make a poison stone, which also happens to give me a chance to poison enemies. Once that was done, I ran over to one of the dragons I had seen and tried taking it down. 
I was able to do tons of damage to this dragon with my crossbow, plus the poison stone would trigger every once in a while. Eventually this dragon got really close and scared me, so I uh, ran away and I uh, started looking for a horse in the surrounding areas. I couldn't find anything, so I decided to move on from the dragon for now, and I put my night vision ring back on and made my way towards the mesa biomes. I eventually also found a snowy village past this hill and fought this mob called a serpix. I was still in these cold biomes till the morning, but the hypothermia became too much, so I had to warp back home. From there, I kept teleporting around till I could find a horse. Once I tamed one of these guys, I grabbed a bunch of grapes from the vineyard in this village, and I accidentally left my backpack here. I realized I had forgotten it in the library, so I panicked and teleported around to every single location I had been in previously. While I was in the desert, I decided to check out this pyramid as well, and the chests in here were okay. I spent the entire night searching for the backpack, and I still couldn't find it. The 64, I finally remembered and snapped the backpack back up. Once that was done, I bought a viper book since I now had the chance to poison enemies and this enchant amplifies damage to poison enemies. There I grabbed a ton of books from the library and traded those to the villager as well. With that done, I came home to make some warp scrolls and put a lot of enchanted books I had away. Then I also got protection 4 on this dragon scale chest plate, so I finished it up with unbreaking 3 and mending. Day 65 to day 66, I hopped on my horse and got out towards the ocean. From there, I hopped on my boat and was chased by these birds. Once I took care of them, I got their feathers, which were needed for avian saddles. I got back towards one of the islands that had a few dragons and wanted to clear them out since I was uh, pretty prepared now. With my crossbow and horse, I did an absolute ton of damage on this dragon. As it turned dark, this dragon was down, but for some reason, I just could not find its carcass and I was freezing. I did eventually find this really cool floating structure and I knew that this place had like almost infinite lapis blocks. I built my way inside of this with very little health and found a warm place to sleep. As soon as I woke up, I made my way into one of the storage areas and found a really good chest. I picked up a few lapis blocks, leveled up my mining to 16, and uh, grabbed one of the diamond pickaxes. I smelt the other diamond gear down and made a bunch of lock picks. So I then tried clearing out a little bit of the nether area, but these cinders packed quite a punch. I couldn't even pick up the nether warts. Once that was done, I made a good amount of bandages and went over to the battle tower. Now this tower was already in bad shape, so it was pretty easy clearing the spawners all the way up. However, most of the mobs ended up spawning underground, so I had to fight through a bunch of them after that. Using some slabs, I took these guys out very easily and picked up three more glowing ingots. I ended up wiping the entire tower out before the morning. The next day, I got a really good enchanted book from this enchanted zombie, and as I moved forward, I found a waystone and a battle tower which went underground. The moment I climbed uh, the tower, my horse died again. I kept moving on though and started going down this structure. For the first time, I was really confident, so I actually went in guns blazing. The only issue was the hypothermia. I also crafted a few slabs and just pushed through floor by floor. My crossbow was extremely overpowered, so I would use that on the enchanted mobs, and uh, they would be done in like two hits. The chests were all right to start, but I was able to get a bunch of levels, which I used on random crits and melee damage. This made my job even easier, and I was able to push through more and more floors. I only managed to take a bunch of damage from uh, one of these reflecting zombies. The chest got better and better, and I was finally at the last two levels. I made sure to grab the chest and bring him all the way up to the top, then grabbed all of the goodies. I had tons of diamond gear, another heart container, and finally some nether warts. So day 68 and day 70 was a lot. The first thing I did was grab the last chest for the battle tower, and I uh, brought them both up one by one. This chest was alright, and my backpack was filled to the brim. From then I moved on and ended up in this taiga biome, where I fought this beholder mob, and uh, these guys were no joke. I took a bunch of damage, but I eventually managed to take that guy out. I healed up next to the lava pit and jumped down this cave. I would end up spending like three days in this cave alone. At first I hopped in looking for trolls. I ended up picking up a bunch of good stuff like these heart crystal shards and fought a ton of mobs as well. I was even able to make a heart crystal and fought through a monster box as well. But none of that mattered when I found a doom like dungeon. I got lucky immediately and saw a troll as well. Once I took that guy out, I got a troll tusk but no leather just yet. Then I started fighting the mobs in here and I was very thankful for my crossbow. I I broke this creeper spawner and started moving forward. With a few arrows, I took out a blighted zombie and cleared this spawner out as well. The chest in here had a good amount of golden apples. As I got deeper, I started encountering witches who were just super annoying. Regardless, they still only took like one arrow. Uh, I thought this dungeon was going to be much tougher, but I was getting through it really well. My backpack and inventory was completely filled though. I got up to level 51 and started noticing more and more lycanites mobs. As long as I kept my distance though, I managed to take out every mob with like two arrows. Then, my diamond sword with vampirism broke and I was stuck using an iron sword. It wasn't too bad for now, and I cleared out more spawners and took out a blighted witch as well. At this point, I was uh, filling out these crates I had as well. Further into this structure, I got more glowing ingots and started fighting uh, these Ventoraptors. 
Once those guys are taken care of, I killed more trolls and fought these dragon looking mobs who were super strong. I broke a bunch more spawners and finally got the troll leather. Around this time, I was also level 61. From here, I opened a few more chests and got a balloon bobble, which was super helpful, and a lucky horseshoe as well. Around this time, a Like Knights mob Ooh, event also awesome. started, so I was planning on getting out of here. I snuck around and broke a few more spawners, then recalled once I got in trouble. For the rest of the day, I came home to chill out. I leveled up my attack to 24 and almost filled out both chests in the bedroom with all the items I had. With that done, I got protection 4 on my dragon scale helmet and tried to get unbreaking on a book. I just ended up wasting a bunch of levels and then uh, put mending on it anyway. Then I realized I had an unbreaking book in the crate, so I was able to deck this helmet out pretty well. I also uh, made an avian saddle and just needed the treats now. With all that done, I got my chest plate and helmet to both be masterful. Then I set up a brewing stand and made some magma cream so I could brew potions of fire resistance. With that, I made an obsidian skull and combined that with a cobalt shield as well. Finally, I ended these days by putting down a heating coil before I froze to death. Day 72 to day 74, I made an extra saddle just since I uh, still needed a horse and I went out to go fight dragons and also make avian treats. The first dragon I saw was right next to the mending village I had once been in. Now this guy was pretty tough and got very close to me, but uh, my main issue this whole fight was the freezing. The hypothermia almost killed me before the dragon did. I had to camp out in the little villager area next to this fire and uh, sleep to regain some health. Once that was done, I went back to the dragon and even through some close calls, I managed to take it out. I went and opened as many of the chests in the nest as possible to hopefully get a mimic to spawn. From there, I recalled home and realized I had frost powder, which I used to make potions of cold resistances. I added redstone to increase the duration and was finally able to go and explore safely. That night, I fought a blighted spider and took out a bunch of crabs and some silexes as well. As the morning hit, I found myself in a weird little structure. I actually had never been in this structure before, and uh, here I picked up this uh, obsidian crusher perk for my mining skill. Now, this place was packed with spiders and zombies. This is where I realized I really needed some sort of lifesteal on my sword because I was taking a eating from these mobs. Even though they weren't super strong, I took tons of damage when they all ganged up on me. In one situation, I actually had to eat an enchanted golden apple, and even with that, I almost died. This structure definitely was not worth it, and the only thing worthwhile was the XP. I warped back home to make more potions of cold resistance and uh, enchanted this fire dragon sword. I got a bad roll on the first one, so I had to craft another flame dragon bone sword, and I used books on that one, which ended up being pretty good. I was a few levels short of making it really good though. Day 75 to day 76, I made temporary iron leggings and an anvil just in case. Then I wanted to take on a Lycanite's dungeon. Now these guys are something super serious since they inflict some wild effects on you. I hopped in this desert one because the bosses could also potentially drop flying mounts as well. I had my golden apples ready and uh, started slowly going down through the first room. I broke the spawners pretty easily and got some more recall potions which were going to be huge help. Then a blighted mob spawned and gave me aphasia which meant I couldn't left click. I was absolutely terrified and ran but I ran into like a huge spawner room and somehow survived. Also the blighted mob just ended up dying from something. Either way I ended up breaking the spawners in the first area and saw one of the first bosses. This guy was called a Gilded Great Worm, and since it was trapped by the water, it was basically useless, and I wiped it out, getting a soul stone and some levels. I also picked up a heart container and cleared out the rest of the floor. With a bunch of levels, I combined two of the flame dragon bone swords together and picked up some more baubles. As soon as that was done, I took the stairs down and started clearing out the mobs and spawners in this level. The chests, once again, were alright. I was just there for the levels and hopefully some more baubles. I was having some trouble in one of the rooms, so I had to do some tactical retreats. But once I got that taken care of, I grabbed some some blocks and went to fight the crypt executioner so for this guy since i blocked the entrance off it was actually super easy to take out i made a heart container again but i happened to max those things out Past that, there was another stairway in this dungeon and that led to the final boss, the Guardian Dragon. I broke the spawners in the first room and then saw that the dragon was trapped in some water. I kept firing my crossbow at it. It took like 4 minutes since it was super tanky but I managed to take the final boss of this dungeon out. Things got much better for me as I equipped a diamond in my offhand and lured this uh, stone link towards me. Once I took it out, I got the heart of a diamond which can become a potion ring of resistance. Past the Guardian Dragon was a chest room and here I didn't get anything good at all. The the dungeon also connected to another structure which had some OP regular mobs, but the chest in here sucked and I didn't want to die so I recalled back home. As soon as I got home, I used these soul stones and I got one mount and a pet. I had to make these dragon saddles though and I was able to ride this Zotar around. The next day, I wanted to see if I had enough items to make a fire dragon eye, so I made uh, four diamond blocks and two glowing gems. 
Once that was done, I almost used all of my blaze powder to uh, craft the glowing ingots it needed. I did make one mistake and uh, that was just crafting an extra glowing gem, but it was all worth it. The fire dragon eye is easily one of the best baubles you could have. It grants night vision on command and a uh, full fire resistance. My next bobble upgrade was getting the potion ring of resistance. I ended up uh, using all of my gold to get it to uh, be healthy quality. Then with 37 levels, I enchanted the dragon scale boots which happened to be amazing. I finalized it with feather falling 4 and mending which uh, made these boots pretty incredible. I also only put a uh, protection on the dragon scale leggings but I really didn't want to put it on just yet. Before the day ended, I got masterful on my boots and replaced the torches around the house. Day 78 to day 79, I started using this obsidian shield instead of the diamond one and put a few levels into magic since I wanted to use these broken heart containers as well. After that, I rode on my Zotar and finally made my way to another Lycanite's dungeon. This one was back in the first village I ever found. Like a dummy, I forgot to drink my cold resistance potion for a bit and took an insane amount of damage in the first room. After breaking a few spawners, I eventually made it to the room past that. Here I almost died again, but somehow managed to break all the spawners and heal up. I then got my magic up to level 15 and still hadn't drank the cold resistant potion yet. I ate this uh, chupacabra meat which gave me leech and that allowed me to clear the next room pretty easily. As I was getting deeper into the dungeon, I took way more damage but I was finally able to put this heart container on at least. Eventually inside one of the rooms, I took way too much damage and had to recall before I lost all the hearts. From there, I had to make more bandages and then use a nymph to heal. I went back to the Lycanite's dungeon and this time I summoned this worm I had gotten from the last dungeon. This guy helped a ton but I still sustained a good amount of damage. I also only picked up like the same baubles I've been had. Inside this dungeon, I noticed charred blocks so I marked this down as a tier 5 dragon nest just in case. The toughest enemy in here were these uh, Luxes and uh, there happened to be just so many of them. Killing lots of them also summoned an Argus and this guy did tons of damage so I had to recall out of there once again. Again. While I was safe, I upgraded random crits and melee damage. Then it was time for my third go around in this dungeon. This time around, I had my imp on me and it wasn't helping at all. Either way, this run was pretty decent and I got into another area inside the dungeon. For some reason, these specific Lycanites mob happened to be extremely strong. I used my crossbow a lot and uh, somehow didn't get a single bobble from any of the chests. I did take out a blighted Zaffin at least. I couldn't even find a single boss here so I recalled back out. From there, I hopped on my Zotar and started exploring. I ended up finding a dragon's nest but couldn't find the dragon though. Anyway, this place was behind an old village that I was in, so I just chilled out and healed till the morning. From there, I ended up in a jungle biome and found my way inside of a jungle temple. The loot in here was alright, and I moved on from there. Past that, I found a giant tree, and in front of that were two enchanted zombies who gave me a bunch of levels. Once I broke inside this big tree structure, a blighted zombie started attacking me. I managed to survive the attack and got tons more XP. With that done, I started going up this structure. There were a bunch of mobs, but it wasn't even close to being as tough as the Lycanite's dungeon. Once that place was cleared, I was back out on the jungle where I fought some new mobs and hunted some Silexes down. Next up, I activated a waystone and kept moving forward, but uh, somehow from something, I started losing all my hearts and if it wasn't for the broken heart bobble, I would have died. I teleported home, made some more bandages and started rolling in chance. I'm not kidding, I ended up getting nothing good so I just settled with a protection and mending on this set of armor. I managed to upgrade the protection and cook some of the Silexes I had. Once all that cooked, I noticed I had no bones left, so I could only make a few avian treats and not the soul stone that would bind the mob. I then stocked up on cold resist potions and then slept to get my hearts back. Once the morning hit, I had to heal up and as soon as that was done, I started reforging my flame dragon bone sword. It took almost all of my bones, but I got it to be legendary. As soon as that was done, I hopped back on my mount and after almost a day of traveling, I found a rock. Now I was super confident and fed this guy all the treats I had. This ended up not even getting my knowledge to level 2. Instead I decided to uh, take my anger out on these two dragons in front of me. I was able to do a good amount of damage on both of them and then I realized how fast my mount was. I took out a few more rocks which leveled up my knowledge to 2 and finally focused on a dragon. I took out the green one first and it wasn't really that tough. I grabbed all the scales and picked up an advanced flame book from a zombie. Once that was finished, I started attacking another dragon and uh, this guy was surprisingly easy since I had it taken down by the morning. The last dragon in this area was actually pretty scary and it actually hit me with a fire attack. Somehow my mount barely took any damage and I was also fine. I focused my attack again and took this guy out as well. This time I grabbed all the blood. Once that was finished, I found a nice battle tower and went in guns blazing. I tore the first few rooms apart. Things were going super well and I didn't even have to heal until I got pretty high up. I opened a diamond lock and made it to the second to last chest. 
Once the area was cleared, I brought the chest down. The loot was alright, but it was time to take on the tower golem. I started the fight with an arrow and eventually took the golem out uh, pretty quickly. This annoying air guy wasted my time, but uh, even through that, I actually managed to loot most of the chest before having to jump off. Once again, I was saved by the broken heart bobble. I put all that loot away and then took out a bunch of crabs on the coastline. Then I slept in a random village to get my hearts back. Day 84 to day 85, I went underground and grabbed some stone. With that, I made a furnace and cooked the crab meat I had collected. After all of that, I ended up with 8 avian treats and then started to move on again. I got lucky once again and found a 4 tower structure as well. So since I had a bunch of cold resistance potions, I was ready to take this place on. I started from the vindicated area and was able to shred through those guys. I even hopped in to break the spawners in here. Once that was done, I got into the first library and picked up all these really great books in the chests. One of these books had lifesteal 2 and unbreaking, so I put the unbreaking on my leggings and the lifesteal 2 on my sword. I gotta tell you this though, the lifesteal was a game changer, I missed it so much. At this point, I was invincible once again. I absolutely ripped through the lowest part of this structure and even when I was bombarded by wither skeletons and vindicators, I barely took any damage. I picked up a boatload of emeralds down here and started moving up the tower. This was also fairly easy now and I actually had time to manage my inventory. I then shredded through this little witch's room and got towards those oak stairs which led up the tower. By then I was level 47 and absolutely filled up my inventory, backpack and each crate. I put 23 levels into melee damage to help and after some inventory management I cleared out a ton of witches on the floor above. This allowed me to get up to the final room where the end crystal was already blown up. I then cleared out the whole room anyway and looted the chests which uh, were not that good. Anyway, there were three more towers so I moved on from there and looted this creeper room. I got on top of uh, one of the corners but the chest sucked. So I tried hopping to another area from here and uh, this didn't work out too well and I dropped down to the first floor. I ended up checking out the basement though and uh, these chests were all average at best and I still didn't pick up any new baubles. I also forgot my backpack so I had to grab that real quick and from there I cleared out the last tower where I got a bunch of enchanted books. There was an extra mending book and some other really good enchants here as well. I had to be really picky since I had very little inventory space. With all this new loot I had to make an extra chest for all the enchantment books at my house. Then I almost filled out those two regular chests for all the items I had as well. Finally I was able to make a soul gazer and I picked up a bunch of perks in the skill menu. With that done I used an ancient tome to increase the sharpness on my sword, put aqua affinity on my helmet, depth strider on the boots, and 11 levels into bow speed. With all that done, I finally went out to grab a rock. This took till the morning when I'd finally gotten myself a flying mount who was bound as well. I immediately hopped on this rock and went to challenge two dragons. The first one was super easy to take out and they didn't even notice me. The second guy actually killed my rock, but I managed to uh, take the dragon out after a few hits from the ground. With that being done, I came home, made an ice dragon crossbow, and then grabbed all these eyes of ender. Plus, I stocked up on food as well. Day 88 to day 89, I hopped on the rock to search for more structures, and along the way, I found a Lycanite's dungeon right in front of my house. I hopped in, and this place happened to be spotting some really strong mobs. I was grateful that I had lifesteal. That allowed me to get pretty deep into this dungeon, and I even saw that it was connected to another doom-like dungeon as well. I got a looting 3 tome, which I used on my sword, and then uh, deeper into this cave, I was fighting like even stronger mobs like these grooves. I also got a cross necklace and finally found a boss called Precious. Very conveniently, this uh, staircase was actually blocking this guy away from me. This made the fight super easy and I grabbed all the loot. I stored them all in my backpack for now and looted the chest behind the boss room. Now these chests just sucked. Even as I went down to the last floor, the chest sucked there as well. I kept getting screwed though and there were no boss mobs, just areas filled with spawners. With that done, I came home, put all the items away, smelt the diamond gear and brewed some regen potions. Finally, after all that, I hopped back on my rock and started taking down more dragons near my house. I fought a second one who was close to the desert village I liked, and uh, once that was done, I fought a third dragon next to the first Lycanite's dungeon I ever explored. I then took out a fourth dragon who was just chilling, and finally a fifth one before the sun finally came up. In 90 to day 91, after more flying around, I fought another dragon, but this one was blocking a battle tower. Now at this point, I was one-shotting mobs and wiping out spawners pretty quickly, so I steamrolled through this entire place. Instead of moving the chest this time, I fought the golem straight on and wiped that dude off the map pretty quickly. The chest on the last two floors happened to be pretty good. I then got my mining up to level 24 and cleared this village's dragon problem as well. At this point, I almost had like two crates filled with dragon materials. I checked out all the books and trades inside this library, which weren't that good, and realized this next dragon killed one of my horses a bunch of days back, so it was time to get my revenge. Once morning hit, I took out a cyclops and found an ice dragon's nest as well. This guy had no clue what hit him and I managed to wipe it out before it even 
even started flying. All the crates I had finally fully filled up and I got very lucky as one of these chests in the ice dragon's nest happened to be a mimic. These guys happened to be hard to hit, but once I took it out, I got a power glove, which was exactly what I wanted. This thing raises your attack damage. I wanted this and the feral gloves as well. I put that on instead of the potion ring of speed and went over to this netherrack themed battle tower. I was slowed down by the soul sand, but that really didn't matter at all. I still made it to the top very quickly and uh, fought the tower golem up there. I tried resummoning my rock to loot the chests uh, before they blew up, but that didn't work. I had to wait till the explosions to clear and then sort through the rubble. I picked up all the good stuff and went right back to flying around. Here I took out another ice dragon and uh, before the night ended I actually took down a third ice dragon and came home to put all the loot away. For the rest of day 91 to day 92 I crafted more golden apples and upgraded to a dragon bone pickaxe. Then I put some books on it to get like efficiency 5 and fortune 3. With that done, I used an ancient tome to upgrade the efficiency as well. After that, I put a few pouches into the tool belt and got books ready for the iced dragon bone crossbow. With that done, I hopped on my rock and started following this eye of ender. Along the way, I found a really cool structure out on the ocean. And here I decided to break the spawners and loot the chests as well. While I was there, I finally upgraded my gathering to 8 so I could use iron axes. With that place done, I went back to following the eye, but quickly took a detour to a speed through a battle tower. Inside of the chest, I just wanted baubles that would help me make an unk charm. I wiped out the golden in here and got some good loot, but uh, it was none of the baubles I wanted. Past the ocean, I took out a dragon and then noticed the eye making a sharp turn, so I knew I was near the stronghold. For some other good news, I ended up on a giant village. I activated the waystone here and picked an area to start digging down. I got pretty lucky and ended up in the stronghold very quickly. From here, I sped through the rooms and found two libraries. After that, I ended up in the portal room where I broke the spawners, covered the lava up, and made some extra eyes of ender to activate the portal. After marking this place down on my atlas, I drank a potion of regen and cold resistance. Then I hopped into the end dimension. I made sure to summon my rock again and had to evade danger immediately. Now at this point, I couldn't fall off my mount, otherwise I would like 100% die. I focused my attack on the crystals from far away and even managed to do some good damage on the ender dragon. The hard part was breaking the protected crystals since I would have to get close to the mobs. With the crystals gone, I needed to grab some dragon breath, so for a good bit of time, I was standing around the pillars waiting for the dragon to attack. This was super dangerous since a bunch of flying mobs would start to spawn. I eventually got two bottles of dragon breath and could finally focus my attack on the dragon. This guy went down pretty easily, but the next challenge was scooping up all the loot down there. While taking a bunch of trips down, I managed to pick up a lot of levels and even some uh, biotite. I got up to level 84 as well and had to jump in the portal to not die, so I missed out on the ender dragon scales. I respawned right on the giant village and after healing, I went to uh, grab some loot. I took all the lapis blocks and uh, picked up this ash destroyer 5 book. Once that was done, I grabbed 21 blocks of gold from here and found a mending villager as well. I picked up two mending books and in case this dude in glass. With that done, I went home to put the items away. From there, I grabbed some wither skeleton skulls and some obsidian as well. I got distracted by a doom-like dungeon right in front of my house, so I had to clear that place out for a little bit. In the morning, I built a nether portal in front of the waystone in the village. I hopped into the nether for the first time and grabbed a bunch of soul sand. I also jumped up on my rock and fought these uh, caco demons here. After grabbing a few more soul sand, I came home and dug down from this cave to make an area where I could fight the wither. I ended up in a structure real quick where I took out a blighted mob, but once that was done, I went right back to summoning the wither. Now this guy was enchanted with some abilities that I couldn't see, but it didn't matter at all. I took the wither out as it only hit me like once. I didn't know what to do with another star just yet, so I just kept it safe in my backpack. I then made an enchanted medkit and enchanted this ice dragon bone bow. Since it ended up getting power 4, I was able to deck it out very nicely. To give it an extra edge, I upgraded the bow to power 5 and then used the tome to get power 6. All of that took like 40 levels. I ended the day by reforging the crossbow. Day 95, I hopped back into the stronghold and waited for my rock to be summonable again. And this took a surprising amount of time. With that done, I jumped into the end and this place was super scary, but I ended up grabbing the ender dragon scale and uh, just managed to scrape past the mobs as I jumped into the portal. I still needed the cracked black dragon scale though, but uh, this was a good start. With that done, I put 37 levels into iron skin. So I don't know if this was day 96, but I uh, went back out to explore since I still hadn't found one structure yet. And that was the mega battle tower. I decided to go off in a direction I hadn't been in and ended up flying too low. This is when a siren pulled me in and a sea serpent followed. Somehow I didn't die because of the broken heart bobble and I uh, managed to take out the mobs, but my shield wasn't looking too good anymore. I quickly went down this uh, roguelike dungeon as well, and here I picked up a bunch of totems of undying and fought hundreds of vindicators, which 
torches and evokers. That dungeon got me up to level 40 and I kept moving forward from there. I then ended up in another battle tower which I sped through and made it to the top. I took out the golem and didn't get anything new. From there I saw two dragons next to each other so I had to take them out and at this point I was getting some lag which basically just meant my bolts would look like they were missing but they actually hit. While taking out both the dragons a lycanite's mob event started and I was able to evade those guys and take the dragons down. I opened the chest around the nest and got lucky again when a mimic spawned. Now this guy dropped this thing called a lucky clover which should be really nice to use when you're uh, exploring or looting chests. Day 97 to day 98 next to one of the nests was a lycanite's dungeon but this one was like split in half. Well the top was at least. Anyway I hopped in and defeated a boss called Pong Kong then started moving down the structure. My backpack was getting filled at this point and I still didn't get any new baubles. I put a bunch more levels into archery and eventually I got lower and found another boss called Princess who did a bunch of damage but couldn't get past the entrance. So I took it out very easily and moved on to the final boss who was called the uh, Malevolent Observer. Now this guy was a tank but I kept my distance and used my crossbow which was shredding through the health. I had a very close call when a bunch of mobs spawned in another room but once I cleared all those spawners it was just the boss and I. I did tons of damage towards this guy and slowly took it out. Once again I didn't get a single bauble so I flew out and found a village which I used to come back home. At home I put everything away which basically filled my chests and then activated these uh, soul stones. I got a Ventoraptor and a Beholder as pets. Once that was done I upgraded my tool belt and repaired my shield. After that I made my first mistake which was uh, forgetting to record. So later on that night I had uh, equipped my lucky clover and found a doom like dungeon. Things were going well until a witch gave me the spinning effect and I had to recall back since I couldn't fight back and I took a bunch of damage. I was back towards a village in a savanna biome that I had found prior to the recording. From there I moved on and found another village and in here I took out a blighted mob who uh, got me a bunch of levels. Once again I was exploring around where I took out a dragon and uh, looted a pyramid but still got nothing new. After taking out what was like my 50th dragon I ended up in one more battle tower hoping to get something good. After steamrolling through this tower I still didn't get a single thing but my rock was blighted at this point which was really cool and I found a few more desert villages. One of them was also next to a defiled lands biome. I looted the library in that village and uh, it actually had some really good books. I ran through another desert pyramid and even found another battle tower. In that tower I used more levels on melee damage but still after clearing that place I didn't get a black dragon scale or any other baubles that could help in making the onk charm. I ransacked another village, looted this library and from from there I finally found something really good. It was the mega battle tower. There also happened to be a village across the structure which had a waystone and from there I came back home to put all the items I had away. At this point my chests were fully packed and before the night ended I also put mending on this enchanted med kit. From day 99 to 100 I was solely focused on this mega tower. At the lowest level things started off fairly easy and the only guys I had to worry about were the witches. With that taken care of I put a few levels into random crits and this is when mobs started spawning and dropping in from above. Some enchanted uh, mobs also pulled my sword which is super annoying but other than that I was barely taking any damage from the mobs in the first few floors. It was just super annoying dropping all the way down. As I moved on through I got hit by potions that inverted my controls and jumbled my inventory but that still didn't stop me. Then I started getting vindicators to spawn so I knew I was getting closer to the top. This is when the game started to lag like crazy as well with all the items on the floor and the entities spawning. It wasn't as bad as the recording looks though. One of the mobs that legitimately scared me was a blighted silverfish. These guys stole my weapons and I had to use a regular diamond sword. After taking them out I got my weapon back and it was super easy once again. From there I mowed through more and more floors and finally got to where the evoker started spawning. I ended up putting 43 more levels into iron skin. I'm not joking when I say this though I didn't get a single new bauble from any of the chests on these floors below. I did however fill my backpack up and make it to the top of the tower. This was by far the toughest challenge right now and it was a blighted tower golem. Using a crossbow I managed to do some really good damage but a fireball sent me to a floor below. When I managed to get back up I took the golem out and I salvaged all the chests. Before looting these chests though I had to dig up and break the evoker spawners above. Once all that was done I finally looted the chests which were super lackluster. I mean I got a bunch of diamonds and other valuable things but the only good bauble I got was this uh, potion ring of iron skin. Once all that was done I came home to put everything away and used a bunch of diamonds to get a stack of lockpicks. If you want 200 days where I set up to fight the final 3 bosses and explore the lost cities dimension let me know in the comments.